Hi, and welcome to another episode of Blacktop Tech Talk. My name is Scott Morris, and I operate Arch City Seal Coating in St. Louis, Missouri. And I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. Got a great episode for you tonight. We're going to talk about sealer, the different kinds, some of the pros and cons, and other things that you're going to want to know to help you pick the right sealer for your operation. Um, so let's get to it. Um, first type is refined tar, also known as coal tar or CT. That's a very durable product. Uh, resists most fluids and chemical spills, has excellent UV resistance to fading. Um, some of the downfalls of this is some people can be quite sensitive to the product. Uh, if you get some of it splashed onto your skin, don't get it rinsed off right away. It can produce a condition known as CT burn, um, where it's basically a chemical burn on your skin. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, there's also some potential environmental issues that are being debated. Um, uses of this material is banned in some areas as well because of uh, the studies that have been done. Um, but that's something that I encourage everybody to research on their own and make their own decisions upon. And of course, if it's not legal to use that material in your area, of course, don't. Um, next material is asphalt emulsion or AE. Um, it's not quite as durable as refined tar. Um, it's less resistant to fluids and chemicals and UV fading, um, but it is much easier to work with. has very low uh, VOC or volatile organic compounds, uh, so there's less of an environmental impact and less of an odor, um, which can be a, a plus for some of your customers. Um, it does have slightly higher cost than coal tar, but it's not a big jump generally. Um, the next product is a polymer acrylic or PA. Um, it's the best balance of performance between uh, asphalt emulsion and coal tar. Um, it does have a higher cost um, and can be more difficult to apply, um, but a lot of manufacturers are moving towards a polymer acrylic uh, product. And there's some really, uh, really high performing uh, products out there. Um, so I do encourage everybody to, to take a look at these. Um, the last kind is a petroleum base, also known as gilsonite. Um, I honestly, I don't have any experience with this. I don't know anywhere in my area, at least, that even sells it. Um, and it is banned in a lot of areas, too. Um, it can be difficult to apply, I'm, I understand. It has a very long cure time, sometimes a week or more. And because of the high volatile organic compound content, um, it has a really, uh, really strong smell. Um, so that may be uh, an issue for you and your customers to consider. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, pardon me while I flip the page on my notes. Um, all of those different types of sealers, um, the manufacturers are going to have what's called a mixed design. And this is basically where they take the raw material and they add water, additional aggregates, or other performance enhancing additives. Um, every single manufacturer will have a data sheet for their material. And they will specify how much percentage of sealer or water or aggregate or anything else in that. And I really can't stress enough how important this is that you follow those mixed designs for a number of reasons. Number one, um, nobody really is going to know the material better than the manufacturer. Um, they've spent countless hours and, and dollars uh, researching their own products. They know what works. They know how best to use it. Um, there is some wiggle room uh, usually for some environmental uh, concerns as far as temperature and humidity. So you can move a little bit more or less with uh, added water or other additives based on your local weather conditions that day. Um, but again, I can't stress enough how important it is to follow those instructions. Um, it's going to give you the best performance for that product over the long run. And it's also going to eliminate any liability issues for you um, as a user of the product. Um, if there is an issue with the product, you can show that you are using the product as designed, as intended, and that can save you a lot of headaches. 
and, and back and forth if there ever is an issue with the material that you've put down. Um, the next uh, topic is aggregates um, in that mixed design. Um, some specify adding sand or slate as an aggregate. Um, I really can't stress enough, again, follow those mixed designs. It's really going to pay off for you the most in the long run. Um, really, I really can't think of any legitimate reason why you wouldn't follow their mixed designs. Um, next up is additives. Um, there are a number of different performance enhancing additives that you can put in your sealer mix. Um, there are fast dry additives that will speed up the dry time. Uh, there are viscosity modifiers to thicken it up if your mix is too thin. Um, there are polymer additives. Uh, that improve chemical resistance to uh, products like uh, asphalt emulsions and they also will help suspend aggregates to keep sand from settling to the bottom of your tank and keep it suspended while you're applying it. Um, there are also color enhancers that help blacken up the final product. Um, most manufacturers will either manufacture their own additives or will recommend uh, someone else's additives. Um, and again, you kind of want to stick with what your manufacturer uh, is recommending for their products because they've spent the time and money to figure out what works and doesn't work. Um, lastly, to kind of wrap it up, um, as far as picking a sealer, um, and I'll, I'll basically I'll tell you what I did. Um, the year before I started my business, I went to every supplier in the area that I could get in with, and I bought five gallons of every product that I could find. I even bought five gallon buckets of the stuff uh, from the big box uh, uh, home improvement stores. And I put a line of every sealer that I had on my driveway and basically used my own driveway as a, as a test bed and let it sit all winter and tried to determine which products were actually performing and how they were performing and, and looking after a winter's worth of wear. And that made a big difference in a lot of directions. Um, number one, obviously, it gave me the idea of what sealers that I could have access to worked in and didn't work. Um, there are a lot of brands that I see out there now um, that I would love to try and probably work very well, um, but unfortunately there's no distributor in my area, so it really doesn't make sense to buy product X when I can't even really get it unless I ship it in. And by that time the, the cost per gallon becomes so prohibitive that it doesn't really make sense. So Pay attention, find out what's available in your area, and, and test it on your own. Um, the other reason why you want to kind of visit everybody is you're going to want to see which of your suppliers is a good, are a good fit for you and your company. Um, some are more friendly than others. You know, you may catch somebody on a bad day too, so give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, but building that relationship with your supplier is going to be really critical uh, to your success. Um, they'll be there for you when you need them. Uh, they'll be there with support and advice and helping you troubleshoot problems and dealing with things that you haven't even thought of yet. Um, I know in my case, um, I would not be nearly as successful and happy um, with what I've built so far if it wasn't for the support of my supplier. Um, they they really will make a huge difference for you. So develop that relationship and find a supplier that's really gonna work with you. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. Um, if anybody has any questions, suggestions for future episodes, uh, feel free to leave a comment or send me a direct message. Um, and uh, hit the subscribe button, we've got more episodes coming. And thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate y'all. Bye.